everybody. My name is Savannah, and I will be presenting my agency, Harbell Community Organization. So Harbell is a multidimensional organization that focuses on a variety of social issues. The first being substance use in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where we are located. That focuses that focus is on prevention and recovery, also domestic violence in conjunction with substance use. And then we have housing services and building and supporting the community. So here are just some examples of the social policies, laws, and practices that Harbell is expected to follow. First is the local and state licensure. Of course, our substance use disorder counselors and licensed clinical counselors um, have to pass a licensing exam, uh, a Maryland state exam, to practice. Second, there's HIPAA, of course, um, that informs um, how uh, privacy and confidentiality in regards to forms and a client's medical records um, are. And then we have Medicare and Medicaid regulations, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and American Society of Addiction Medicine, or ASAM. Um, this professional organization focuses on addiction treatment, and their research um, and science informs many addiction centers, including Harbell, um, inform our work and inform our treatment. Um, and they also have a criteria um, of who uh, can who meets um, a substance use disorder and meets the criteria of treatment. Harbell is governed by a board of directors. Um, here are the list of names of the board of directors. Their affiliations vary. Um, some are on the Baltimore City Council, some are community members, uh, and other various individuals are involved in the nonprofit and human services fields in Baltimore. Um, their responsibilities um, is a long list, but here are a few examples. They focus on human resource management, performance improvement, and community needs planning. Here we have the agency structure, um, board of directors, and then within the board of directors, um, or underneath it rather, are the executive committee, which includes the chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. And then we have the executive director, um, Roxanne Fuentes. She's the LCSW and my supervisor. And underneath that, we have finance and HR, admin assistants, um, they focus on billing, insurance, and other things that matter. And then in Harbell, there's three programs. I highlighted the one that I exclusively work with, which is the Prevention Recovery Center. They have a director and, of course, staff, um, community services, the director stands alone, and then housing partnership director. Underneath that is their housing advisory board. And underneath that is the homeowners, counselors, and office assistant. Um, because Harbell is a nonprofit, um, we have our funding sources are varied. They come from fees, like from um, insurance contracts and grants, which often comes from the city of Baltimore, and fundraising and donations. This comes from many community events, like flea markets, dining out, fundraising, um, things of that matter. So here's the agency structure of specifically Harbell Prevention Recovery Center or HPRC where I my internship is at. Um, of course, we have the executive director. Um, she's responsible for all of Harbell. Um, we have HPRC program director. She's responsible for um, all the supervision of all the services under the Harbell Prevention Recovery Center. And then of course, we have the program staff, which include clinical personnel, um, that work with clients um, in regards to addiction and treatment. Um, here are the variety of programs that HPRC offers. We have IOP. Um, this is for those with the extensive history of use. Um, clients attend a minimum of 20 IOP groups and demonstrate 30 days sobriety before transitioning to standard outpatient treatment. Um, standard and intensive outpatient treatment are similar in that they both attend um, group classes, psychoeducational group, individual counseling sessions. So after IOP, people often go to standard outpatient treatment. Um, this is just one notch below. This usually lasts for six months. Um, like I said, they also attend individual appointments, psychoeducational sessions, and therapy groups. And then we have abuser intervention program, or AIP. Um, this runs concurrently with standard outpatient services. 
This is for folks who have a, a substance use disorder as well as a domestic violence charge. Um, these clients are often referred from the courts, uh, probation officers, or lawyers. Um, that is also kind of the same with standard outpatient treatment, but often with standard outpatient treatment, they're also referred from inpatient facilities, detox centers, and often self-referrals. And the DUI DWI program is alcohol, alcohol education classes for those with DUI DWI, DWI charge. So these are not associated with the standard outpatient IOP or AIP. Um, this is, of course, main people take this often because mandated by the courts after getting a charge, um, after getting a DUI charge. So here are the other Harbell programs. Um, unfortunately, I don't uh, interact with them much or have much work with them because they're in separate offices um, and have their own different staffs. But the housing program, um, they serve clients seeking to purchase homes in Baltimore City or Baltimore County. A community services program, they work with Harbell member associations of over 80 constituent organizations, which I will go in on in a little bit. Here are some of the HPRC staff positions. We have substance use disorder counselors. Um, so that means their licensure um, only allows them to work with those who have a substance use disorder. Um, and they can't go further than that. That's where our licensed clinical counselors come in. They can work with those who have substance use disorders and say that client also has a mental health disorder. They can work with them so they can focus on both of those diagnoses. Uh, we have case managers that help connect clients to a variety of resources and services. And then we have a nurse practitioner. Um, this is often because many of our clients come directly from detox facilities and they're still experiencing some of those that effects that happen uh, that come from detox. Um, here's Harbell's mission, which is to build and support our communities through service, advocacy, and empowerment. Um, and then all the goals is, of course, to reduce and eliminate harmful involvement with substance abuse and violence and interpersonal relationships, provide services, promote and empower potential buyers and uh, buying homes, and stre strengthening and maintaining community relations in Northeast Baltimore. However, our, our efforts have also been including all of Baltimore. So here are some examples of community collaborations and community development that Harbell has. So the Harbell um, sponsors the Northeast Citizens Patrol. This is essentially what it says in its name is a citizens patrol that covers the communities of Northeast Baltimore. Um, these members patrol every Thursday, Friday, and designated Saturday nights between a certain amount of time. Um, and they work closely with uh, a Baltimore City uh, police officer um, and kind of work as a middleman between the community and the police. Um, as many cities, there's various neighborhoods and all every neighborhood is unique in their own way. Um, Harbell works with various neighborhood improvement associations in Baltimore. And then lastly, this is a new program that I have been working very closely with. Uh, which is Mergenthaler Vocational and Technical High School, or MERVO. Um, we're setting a program there um, called Second Generation Recovery. It's essentially focusing on prevention of substance use um, among adolescents. And so far, I've been enjoying it. Um, and it's been quite an experience working at, in a high school um, and educating students about uh, drugs and alcohol. So here in this bubble is our treatment philosophy, which is abs abstinence oriented, but recognizes that some clients may not be ready to accept abstinence and will need to will need assistance with establishing harm reduction goals. And this is where the personalized treatment plans come in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, IOP and standard outpatient, they attend individual appointments, psychoeducational sessions and therapy groups. AIP runs concurrently with standard outpatient. Um, these clients attend DV classes as a therapy group and attend drug and alcohol educational group. DUI, DWI are primarily psychoeducational groups, you know, to meet that those requirements for the court mandated um, requirements. And then many of our work are, well, our um, individual counseling sessions as well as our groups are heavily emphasized with motivational interviewing, which we've learned in class before. 
um, cognitive behavioral therapy, and the stages of change model. Um, this informs us where the client is at and how we can personalize a treatment plan where they are at at that moment. So accountability, um, I meet with my supervisor at least once a week. Um, and then in addition to the doing timesheets for Boise, um, I do a timesheet with Harbell. And because the Mervo program is through grant funding, um, those who do the program at the high school must submit trackers that show what we do at a, on an hour to hour basis. And of course, we have to maintain training and education. So there's a variety of training that we um, have to complete at Harbell. So here are my references, and I hope you all enjoyed learning about Harbell Community Organization. Thank you.